Hello everybody, welcome back to day three of my Halloween card series. Today I'm using Happy Haunting by Kindred Stamps. This is an adorable stamp set. It may remind you of a certain 1980s movie that's pretty popular during the Halloween season. I did have to look up the date and it was actually 1988. Boy, does that make me feel old. So I'm starting off the coloring using the purples. I'm doing her ponytail holder and the back part of her dress, and then I gave her some purple eyeshadow as well. For the skin, I'm only doing a two color blend here because her skin is quite pale. And once I get these two colors on, I'll actually use my blender marker to push back some of that color to make it even lighter. Once I get her face done and her hands, I'm going to move on to her dress, which is kind of like a spider web. So I'm just going to use the darkest colors around the lines just to give them some definition. So I'm going in with the R39 and then I'll go in with the midtone, which is R29, and I'll blend that out using the R24, which is the lightest. Then I'll move on to the black. I'm going to do her boots and her hair in black. So I'm going in with the darkest marker here. Some of these spots are really quite tiny, so I'm just using the very tip of my marker. For her hair, I'm making the darkest portions around uh, her face and then at the top of her ponytail and underneath the ponytail holder. I'll come in with the mid color just to bring out that darkest bit making sure to leave a highlight for the lightest color, which is the C5. I do have to blend that quite a bit to get it smooth, but I just went over the image a couple times with the C5 and did get it to blend out nicely. Black is always tricky, I find, so it's one of those colors that I'm always practicing. Once I get her complete, I'm going to move over to the little guy on the left. I'm going to use my lightest marker here just to put a base coat down on everything that I want to be black. And I'm basically just doing this because I didn't want to mess up. So this is really helping to map out all of those black areas. Once I do that, I'm actually going to come back in with the darkest marker, the C9 again. And I'm just going to add that in the top portions of the stripes. Again, some of these stripes are very thin, so I just had to be really careful and make sure to only use the fine tip of the marker. So I'll blend that out with the C5, and then I'll move on to the white stripes. So normally I would use a C1 and the blender marker for white, but for this, because it's against the black, I decided to use the C3. I do use it quite sparingly, but it really helps to give some shadow and definition to the white stripes. So then I'll blend that out with the C1, making sure to leave some white areas so it actually looks white, and then use the blender marker here. Once I get that complete, I actually am going to use the C1 on their eyes for both of them. And then I'm going to work on his face. So I'm going to add the purple around his eyes and you can really see him starting to come to life now. I added some purple inside his mouth and then realized that I had forgot to do the rest of his mouth. So I do do that off camera. I used the R24 from her dress, which was the lightest color on his tongue and then add some green on his teeth and blend that out with the C1. I'm going to use a couple green markers for his hair, so I'm using YG25 and YG03. I kind of did some flicking in the like the largest size of the hair. I didn't want it to be a really smooth blend, and I like the way that turned out. I'm going to add some green goo around his face, and then I'm only going to use the E00 for his skin because he's quite a bit paler than his female friend. And I felt like she was still a bit dark, so I did go back over with the blender pen as well. So I'm using my black glaze pen now just to make their eyes pop. And now I'm going to work on the background of the card. 
So I cut out a circle just using a die and some cardstock. So that's going to be a moon in the background. So I used seedless preserves and wilted violet for the purple. Sped this up quite a lot, but you can get a sense of how this background came together. The white piece of paper is just a little bit of cardstock, which I've laminated. It really helps to kind of dip off. I can't think of the right name right now. Dip off is not right, but to stamp off uh, some of the ink. And then because it's a slick surface, you can go back and reuse the ink that's on there. So I used some black soot just to make it look like a night scene. Pull that up and that looks great. And now I'm going to do the glass, glass, grass. So for the grass, I'm going to use, I think it's um, Lucky Clover and then I'm going to use uh, Citron. What's, I'm sitting here in the dark doing this voiceover and here it is, Twisted Citron. One of my favorite colors, can't believe I couldn't remember that. So just going to go back and forth and then once I get this down I am going to bring the black soot in but I'm just going to use whatever is left on my blending tool. I do have a different sponge for all of my colors so I'm just able to use what's left there. I don't have a blending tool for all of them but I do have a sponge for each of them. So here you can see the scene coming to life. I'm using that black soot blender sponge again just inside of the moon and then I'm going to use the um, this is let me see the gray what's the gray one called hickory smoke and I'm just dipping a wet paintbrush in there just to add some dimension to the moon I'm going to use my distress sprayer here and add some detail with oxidization to the back of not to the back, to the card panel. I'm using a black card base for today's card and here is a stamp set that I love. It's an older stamp set by MFT. It's called Grave Situation. It's the only stamp that I have with gravestones and unfortunately this is retired so if you want to recreate this card use any kind of gravestones that you have or you could simply draw your own as well but I really wanted to use these for this particular scene. So now I'm going to stamp on the sentiments Happy Haunting and I also stamp Showtime up to the left top of the moon. And then I'm going to add the little characters. I did pop them up on some 3M foam tape. And to finish off the card I'm going to add some of my Spectrum Noir glitter marker. So I hope you if tongue-tied I hope you've enjoyed this card. Stay tuned for more in the Halloween card series. All the links to Not Too Shabby will be below. Don't forget to use coupon code GEN10 to save 10% off your entire order. And I will see you really soon in the next video. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.